So I've come in this morning on the weekend and it's really nice and quiet. All the machines are off and everything like that. So I just wanted to go through putting a little bit of air into the high low lines because before we used to get air, if we put it in the low, the air was bypassing and coming out the high and vice versa. We're currently in high gear. So if I put the low line into the end of the airline, which is a perfect fit in there, I'll put that in. Now you'll see the shaft come up. Just turn it a little bit. Now, this has got eight bar in it. There is no air leaks, nothing. But if you listen, when I pull off, there we go. That is holding the air perfect on all them new O-rings. Same again, if I now put it in the high, you see the shaft go down. No air leaks, nothing coming out of anywhere, all lovely and silent, and then popped off. So yes, that kind of confirms that the seals are doing their jobs. And it's a little check to make sure that via the whole line, high low airlines, that it is shifting gear okay. And I've decided to leave this clip on. If that ever needs replacing, I will just raise the transmission, you know, a foot, eight inches, whatever I need to get in there and do that clip. So that's gonna stay. Okay, so I've gone through and cleaned up the motor. I'll give you a little walk around in a minute. I've just had to position the camera up there. So we've got all this built up. We've put our new gearbox isolator mounts in and the steel bushes. Once you push the steel bushes in, they will hold them in place and they're not gonna fall out. So I thought I'd do that now. I decided to leave that double ear clip on the oil line that I said about before. Um, I said I may change it for a Jubilee clip, but I decided if that hose needs to be replaced, I'll end up using the forklift and just lifting the transmission anyway. So what we need to do now is lift this whole plate on top of the motor here. Now what I've done, I had to look back at one of the previous videos and I've marked the front of the motor because obviously there's three bolt holes and you could orientate that wrong. So I looked back in my videos at the front section, found which is the front bolt. So I need to lift this up here, put it on nice and square as I can with the weight over this pulley and then we can just drop one of the bolts in so it takes the weight because it won't tip itself over so that should be fine and again as I mentioned before about this o-ring that it doesn't actually touch the bore on this plate and when I thought about it further whether it's actually required at all or whether it's just to stop some oil splash because obviously it wouldn't want to seal properly because it would be spinning in the o-ring and eventually get hot and melting so it's obviously not designed to touch the actual plate, which again, maybe it's not needed at all, I don't know. So I'm now gonna lift this, and you might need a hand with this. I haven't got anyone here, so I'm gonna try and go it alone, because obviously everything is quite heavy. Two of you would be easier. We are on there. Just going to put a bolt in if I can. We're not fully down on the plate. So, what I'm going to do is just use this small copper mallet just to tap it down. Get a couple of bolts in to 
to make sure it can't fall off and it's not top heavy enough that it's going to fall. Now let me remove you from the camera stand a second and I'll show you that we're not quite where we need to be. So you can see on the gearbox there, you can see this shoulder on top of the, actually on top of the motor, the shoulder going into the gearbox plate there. So we can see we're still sat up. The actual pulley itself, we're just rotating this to make sure that everything's okay and not binding. And I think I might need a slightly bigger rawhide. to get that onto there, but it's not wanting to go. I don't remember, it was difficult to get off and I've actually cleaned this up. I'm trying to see. I look quite level, but it still doesn't want to fall into place. Maybe that side's a bit higher. So I'm gonna put the camera down a sec and I'm going to use both hands to try and jiggle this into position. So I'll put you back in the back here. Try and get your position somewhere where you can see what I'm actually doing. So I'm going to try and go around here. Try and tap this in. Do is I don't want to force it. If something's meaning it doesn't want to go in. It's obviously engaged in the gear now because it's turning the shaft. But I expected it to fall down onto that plate a little bit easier. Right, because I'm not sure, and I don't want to damage anything, I'm going to lift this back off. I'm going to take it back off and just check nothing is caught, nothing is in the way. I can't see what we have in it, but I don't want to risk it. Okay, so we're going to put this. This time round, I'm going to lay this on its side so nothing can get knocked or caught. And everything is good there. I'll tell you what, it might be the fact that I've cleaned so much dirt away. This, I don't know if this camera angle is good that this step machined into the plate to locate on the motor is actually not as deep as that shoulder. So I think I might have been there. Let me measure that. Let me get a caliper. few places. Right, we've got a seven mil shoulder on the motor. And we've only got a three mil step in there. So I will have, which makes sense. And I'm gonna move this out now. I am gonna have a four mil gap, which is what I'm seeing. So we were good. And that answers your question there. So let me put that there so you can see again. And I'm just gonna re-wipe this. 
bit of WD on here. Wipe any gunk, any debris that I might have just got on it. Okay, pick it up again. Good hold on it, don't want to drop it. On. Get a bolt in so it won't fall. Just done them up lightly, tap it so we're home. And now measure that gap as four mil. So we are actually where we want to be. So I'm now going to do these up. They're talked up lovely. Personal preference with some of these bits and pieces on the big bolts. Just like give it a torque check on some of them. Right, let me take you out there. So you can see you do have a four millimetre gap and I was thinking this has got closed down but I hasn't, hadn't measured the counterbore and the shoulder on the motor. So that's correct, we've got a four millimetre gap around there. Obviously you can see I cleaned the motor up. I took off all that gummed up rubber from around here. Um, I'm not sure what I'll do with regards to this yet. There's no label on there, it come off. Because I'd really like to know a part number on that. Fourteen zero zero two. To whether I could actually, this must have had a cover at some point. I'm guessing. Must have had a little cover. So when I put that back in, obviously it doesn't actually bolt to anything here, but I'm guessing it did at some point. There probably was a mount there at some point. So yeah, three nineteen mil or three quarter mil head bolts. Took them up, just gunned them up. To be fair. They are not going to pull out of these threads, you're not going to damage them. And we are fully assembled. So the next stage, I will get this, um, I'll have to get this put onto its side and propped up. And we'll put the other pieces back on, which is going to be the cable tidy. We'll give that a little bit of a clean at the bottom area and around them plugs. But other than that, that's good to go back on. So that can go on. We've got our oil fill tube. This one here, which sits, can't put it under there. But it sits into this fitting at the back over here. So we'll clean that up. And if I've got another olive in that size, we'll use a new olive. Obviously it's just got a rubber cap over the end to stop any dirt. And then we've also got our main um, cover assembly there. So yes, I'm gonna get that put back on there. I'll have to lay this onto its side and block it up with wood to be able to slide that back over the same way I took it off. So that is it for the reassembly of the motor and the gearbox. I'll do them other bits off camera, same as I took them off, off camera. Um, and then the next stage is going to be getting it on the forklift ready to lower back onto the machine. Now I don't think I'll be able to do that today because I'm here on my own and I think it's going to be quite difficult to manoeuvre the forklift and get it over there positioned, get off the forklift, lower it off the fork. You know, it's going to be quite awkward, especially as where the fork comes in here at an angle like it did before and the strap was, it wanted to turn to be in line with the fork. 
So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that myself, so I might leave it. My other option is I may do something with the top plate to allow me to use a lifting eye because I've got a few, I think, we did have a few lifting eyes um, that I could potentially put on. There you go, that one's got a nut. I could put that straight through that plate, to be fair. That could probably go straight in there and allow me to lift that with a much shorter strap or a little chain section because again we need to lift it high enough now to clear all this which I took off and if you remember before when I took the motor off and it wouldn't clear the arm for the pendant whilst Gary was in the forklift I swung it over to one side and tilted it up so it would clear so yeah I'm gonna get all that put back together we'll get it ready for lifting and at whatever point I am ready to lift it I'll do a quick video and I'll probably speed it up like a time lapse or something like that showing you getting it reinstalled so yeah, thanks for watching. See you again soon.